So you were you were born in Peru, is that correct, or were you born in Montreal? I was born in Ottawa, Ottawa. and then at four years old, we went to Peru, and I grew up there till seventeen. So I'd say like all my all my conscious childhood was in Peru. So my upbringing was there, and I still consider myself Peruvian. Did you hear about ayahuasca when you were growing up? No, no. No, When did you come? I only heard about it uh, once I was in Canada, and this was like probably like 2003, 2004. Somebody gave me a a CD-ROM with Terrence McKenna speeches, (laughs) and uh, and then through those speeches, I was like, "Oh, there's this thing in Peru that sounds very interesting." So I, I asked my surfer friends, like, "Do you guys know about shamans?" Like, "Oh yeah, we know about shamans." So I got in touch with one. And every time I would go, my intention was to go and check it out in the rainforest, but I didn't care like that much. It was more like curiosity. And so I'd just get stuck in Lima doing shows or hanging out with my friends. But then eventually in 2013, that shaman came to my uh, art show that I was having and he played music. And then I ended up going there and it was a very interesting experience. And at the time, I just thought it was like, okay, wow, I can... I'd, I'd learned so much from that one thing and this this shit's so deep <laughs> and I didn't even know it was, it was that deep but I thought like okay but that's sad I was not even doing any psychedelic at the time uh, and then I had all that episode with uh, my marriage going down and uh, I was like I need something to give me some answers so I went and I did a full on dieta and uh, there were ceremonies and there I saw, yes, you got to get divorced. And two, you got to come here every year and keep on working on yourself through this medicine and uh, recalibrate. It's like you're taking your car to the mechanic. You got to come and bring your car to the mechanic. And remember who you really are. And remember mm. what you're supposed to be doing. So then I started going every year. And then eventually I started doing retreats there. So it made it easier for me to go there. I'm... I'm curious about your process, Chris. I mean, whenever I see such intricate artwork like yours, is this something that's constantly being developed? How did you initially sort of create your process and how do you go about it now? Is there a certain method and sort of ceremony? Is it really connecting with the individual? And then could you kind of go into that a little bit? Um, It changes each time. uh, And it also goes by medium. When it comes to murals, murals are very quick. I I just painted like a three-story building in like four days. Mm -hmm. Uh, while a canvas that's a lot smaller will take me like a month or sometimes many months uh, because I go like really meticulous and careful and polished. Um, When it's my canvas for myself, it's me expressing what I'm going through or something that I love or it's about me. When it's a mural for somebody else, it it can be like a mix because the the client wants me to do their thing, but still it's through the filter of me. So let's go, uh, the example of the big uh, three-story building mural I did for that skate shop. Uh, The guy wanted something skater and to do with action figures. Well, I collect action figures and I've been skating since 86. (laughs) So I just made like the mega craziest like skater madman uh, entity that came to mind. So I, I draw it in my sketchbook and then I just have to put it on to a building and okay. uh, that's uh, more technical but yeah and are you are you using a combination of like oil spray paint or is it always what what as far as materials what do you usually like to gravitate gravitate towards um well i've been using uh spray cans okay which i believe is some kind of i don't know i don't know what this the spray paint uh, is of a spray can. I'm, I'm guessing some kind of like acrylic right. based painting. As for on my canvases, I usually paint with acrylics, but sometimes I do watercolors, sometimes oils. Sometimes I like to draw. Sometimes I'll get, uh, you know, just inks or sometimes I'll go on my pad and I'll do like digital art. Um, sometimes I like to collage. Sometimes I like to do a sculpture with a, uh, pieces of crystals I found or my cut off dreads or, you know, whatever, <laughs> uh, broken skateboards. Uh, I like to switch it up. 
I like to right. keep it interesting because to just yeah. find one thing that works and just do it till death, that doesn't sound like an interesting life. <laughs> mm, yeah. You know, I, uh, I remember one thing that we were talking about when we met and I was interviewing you um, as, as a writer, like a songwriter, and then like you're writing films and stuff like that. Um, I've had like brief and fleeting moments of writer's block. And I remember I asked you if there's any kind of parallel to that with you. And you're like, no, nah, I never, I never get that. And it always made me interested to to follow up on that. Like how, what is the process of the art coming through you? How cathartic is it? And, and if that you can also throw in, like how did plant medicine start informing what's coming through and ending up on the canvas or the mural or whatever? Right. Um, I just get a lot of ideas. And because I'm a slow painter, as I say, like, if I got an idea, it'll take me a month to paint. Meanwhile, in that month, I'll learn more things. Or I'll go through more experiences. There'll be more things I want to paint. So, you know, it stays in the sketchbook, sometimes for years, but hopefully eventually I paint everything. I probably won't be able to paint everything I want before I die. <laughs> but if I can paint a lot, I'll be happy. Um, as for, what's the second part of the question yeah well uh, plant medicine like how is that medicine. informed did did it change the way you make art did it did it enhance it like you know um plant medicine is not like transform me into a new artist i already had the filter of chris i got a style it was always being psychedelic even when i wasn't doing psychedelics um i'm just a trippy kid I grew up in the 80s, and I like all these colorful uh, cultures that might look like they came from drugs, but, you know, it's the cartoon at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, and then you do different psychedelics, and you learn things, and that changes me from the inside. So then what I express might have a little bit more of the flavor or the vibration mm -hmm. of that medicine or the evolution of Chris through that medicine. It's not like... I go in there and the ayahuasca space and I take a picture and I come back and I paint it. Sometimes I can remember some things and, and if I can paint it, amazing. That's like a record of these things that we see that are quite difficult to capture because they keep on moving and they're, they're so detailed and the uh, angles are very three-dimensional. Like when you're in the 3D, uh, when you're in the ayahuasca world, it's not like you see a flat screen with my eyes. It's like I can see fall mm. around and behind it's kind of weird and i don't know how to put that on a <laughs> flat canvas sometimes right. i'd say as the medicine changes me i express that through the filter of chris but then new ingredients come through new languages maybe new color combinations uh it's subtle mm. uh, sometimes when i'm in there and be like wow this would be amazing painting and i was like <laughs> shh, 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 don't think about work right now don't think uh. about the next painting that's uh human mundane stuff just let's keep on working. Let's keep on polishing you. And don't worry, I will come from behind and help <laughs> you make new paintings. Yeah. You know, so uh, part of the reason I ask is because almost all of the stuff that you create is, it has this positive twist to it. Um, it, it, it looks very fun. Uh, everything from the galactic dude to that frog behind you, yeah, there are a couple ones, and I, I don't know the name of it, but that one where that almost like demon is purging, mm -hmm. and it's darker colors. And um, I'll see if I can find... What's the name of that one? It's called Shadow Work. Shadow Work. We'll see if yeah. we can find that one. Yeah, um, the, the reason I ask, though, is because like that also shows that it's not just... I don't know, for lack of a better word, like uh, a gimmick. You have your style. You don't stray from your style. You just do that. It's 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 one thing, and it, it slightly evolves depending on the medium. Like you do have like these the, right there, uh, you know. So as as everyone's seeing, that's one of the first ones I saw where I I didn't at first acknowledge it as your work. And so, could you explain a little bit about what what's going on in this image? Well, when I do a painting, I, I have to come from an energy, from an experience, from, from something that I'm trying to get from that, my insights to my outsides. 
Uh, this painting happened during a uh, depression I was going through. I was living in Vienna at the time in Austria. I was teaching a uh, five-week workshop at a visionary art academy. And I had just broken up with my girlfriend. I was very bummed out about it. And it, just Vienna was like a dark, cold, rainy city with unfriendly people. And I wasn't even getting along with my students so much, which was rare. And uh, I just had to dance with my shadow. Uh, and I painted something that's a little bit more of my roots, if anything, because when I started doing art, it was all more punk, heavy metal kind of art. And then as I let that negativity go, then my art started becoming more positive. And when I paint positive, it, it's not like that I don't acknowledge the negativity. The world is full of negativity. We're flooded in it. Uh, if anything, the code of the mainstream is always like pumping out the negativity so we can mm -hmm. so we can think that the world's negative and then we vibrate that and we keep on manifesting that. So it's unbalanced. Uh, mm -hmm. I rather change the code. I, I rather say like, hey, there's a positive to everything too. Even when you're going through your shit, that's a positive thing. So in that image of the uh, shadow work, he's still holding a crystal being like, you will dance with me. You will get hurt, but we're going to purge and you will get uh, a reward from it. You know, there's mm. a, there's a oh, goal to it. It's, 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 it's not meaningless. It's not just pure pain for no reason. There's a purpose. And here you will get your gift through learning through the dark side. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I honor the, darkness and the negativity and the sad and depressive times as much as the good and happy times as much as i enjoy the latter more for sure yeah man and I, I really do appreciate that because you're right and you know being somebody who just you know not even what was it seven months ago started up a, a news channel um took me a while to even navigate what it was i was trying to do with it and um really, I knew that news had to change. I knew from the start because I wasn't able to put it into the words that I am now when I first started. Um, and I wasn't able to then really hit the nail on the head. But when you look at the news specifically, most news is really pointing out how to identify what's wrong with the world, who is the perpetrator, and the victim is obvious. It's always you, the watcher. You know, the watcher is always the victim of whatever's going on. And whoever's head's on the chopping block today is the perpetrator that is trying to disadvantage you, the freedom-loving American or wherever you are, you know. And so for me, I kind of felt, well, this has to change and there has to be medicine in more than just... So I believe you bring medicine to art. I believe uh, Nako, Xavier Rudd, Trevor Hall, uh, Peya, these are all people who bring medicine into music. And I felt like, why couldn't you bring medicine into any and all formats? And so what I was, was then realizing was then like, you have to acknowledge in medicine because all the medicine that I've ever done, the first thing that it will do is it'll show you your hangups. It'll show you your blind spots. It'll show you your darkness and your shadow, and you'll have to confront it. And then it'll also show you where it emanates from, you, who made the decisions that led to where this is, you, and who has the power to unravel all of that, you. And so to me, that's kind of been where I, I really appreciate that you put that in your art. Because I think that is what medicine is, not denying that negative side of it. And, you know, like the new age uh, wet dream that we can all just, <laughs> you know, uh, pretend or visualize the world as being the way we would prefer it to be, which is always towards pleasure and away from pain, rather than seeing that both are, are dual sides of the same coin. And that when engaged with truthfully, openly, um, can lead to healing. Make sure you all head over to benjosephstewart.com, become a member. You'll have access to the growing library of deeper dives where I talk about all the stuff that I really can't talk about on YouTube. Make sure you get involved in the Discord chat. That's where a lot of the conversation is happening, talking about new theories, being able to interweave into the greater conversation that is how we awaken infinity. That's our highest potential. And I just want to remind you, you are the most powerful technology ever known to creation.
wield it like an artist with a conscience.